like the show? Uh, nice to see you all again. I'm Stacey Wilson Hunt from New York Magazine, and I'm very honored to be with two of the most charming, hilarious people I think I may have ever met in my life. So let's bring them out. Rob Lowe and Fred Savage. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming, guys. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. We're Fairfax is not easy at 6 o'clock. Oh, my I God. I really, uh, Unreal. I really, we just got here. You, <laughs> so you guys had barely, to want it bad. Yeah, so thank you. They did really not, appreciate they, it. They were early and super polite, so sorry to, to, to break down that image. Um, so before we get to your fantastic show, um, I wanted to know what each of you considers your big break in this business. Oh, for, for, oh, um, I mean, I did a TV series when I was 15, and that was, I mean, to get a big show, you know, I was like the kid, you know, um, it was called A New Kind of Family. Uh, it was on ABC, and it was opposite 60 Minutes <laughs> at a time when 60 Minutes was the number one program. And I remember there were only, get this, there were only 23 shows on television. Wow. And the reason I know that is because guess who number 23 was? <laughs> <laughs> it was ugly. Um, so uh, that was short-lived, uh, shockingly. Mm -hmm. So that, that was it. And then The Outsiders um, yes. was, was the great. big. <laughs> and, but listen, I've been around long enough that I have like I have like reprieves every ten years. So uh, you have big breaks every decade. Yeah, every, yeah, there's a lot of big breaks. You gotta have a break every decade. If you Actors, string you enough need a breaks break together, decade, yes. you have a career. That's how it Basically, happens. every gig I feel like is a break. I really do. I feel like that's how you stick around. Everything's like really. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll be Don't there. Don't want me? Yeah, I'll be there Monday. Um, but I mean, my first I mean my first job was a Pac-Man Vitamins commercial. Oh, no. Yeah, I lived in Chicago, and um, I was not an actor. I had no designs of being an actor, no goals of, of acting. How, How did you get this you? commercial? I was six years old. I was six years old, and um, my line was, uh, Fred Flintstone was the big kid's chewable vitamin. At the oh, time. oh, yeah. Yeah, still oh, is. Huge. Huge. Uh, we did not uh, topple that market, but my line was, goodbye, Fred, hello, Pac-Man. <laughs> Which America soundly rejected. <laughs> I was not <laughs> convincing, but uh, but that was my first job, and that even just showed us that there was like sh show business. Mm -hmm. It was it was it was a total fluke. Did your parents encourage you to do? You didn't drive yourself to this. No, my parents commercial. drove me. My parents <laughs> drove me, and we we had there were auditions at our local community center hmm. for a commercial that we didn't get. We just went with friends instead of going to the park that day. And the same director called me for a commercial that was downtown this time. Mm. And it was a pain. Like, I had two young, a younger brother and a younger sister, and my mom had to bring us all, and I didn't get that job. And then the director called me for another job, and mom's like, look, we've already been at two of these things. <laughs> two. <laughs> two whole what, auditions. What is this show business <laughs> crap, you know? We didn't know people auditioned for years. You know, like, we're 0 for 2. This is not very mid Very Midwestern of your Yeah, of your she's like, yeah. you know, I got to drive downtown. <laughs> No, you know, it's, just, it's not, for, not for us. Uh, who would do that, you know? Uh, and, uh, and so he's like, well, just tell Fred, you know, uh, that it's for Pac-Man. And, you know, I was six. And it was like the biggest thing in the world. And I was like, oh, of course. And so my parents drove me, and I got that job. And then I, that, I just kept doing more. I really enjoyed it. So that, that was my big break because that just opened up. I, I, I didn't have show business friends. I wasn't in the show business world. And... And, um, and that just kind of opened it all up for me. Hmm. And what would you say was the worst auditioning experience you had early on in your career? Oh, for sure. I, I vividly remember a Dr. Pepper commercial <laughs> where I remember like, the, like when I passed the building on, on Ventura Boulevard, I get agita still. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because it was, because I used to take the bus. You, you guys, I lived on Point Doom, so it's way mm -hmm. out in Malibu. And, and I used to take the bus all the, you know, you can imagine how far that is on a public bus. Um, and you'd get in there, and, and I remember Polaroid cameras had just come out. Hmm. So, so literally, sometimes you'd walk in, and, they, and you'd go all the way there, and they'd stand there, and they'd go, thank you. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, I could literally get back on the same bus. It hadn't even taken off yet. Um, but but on, on this particular... Um, <laughs> horrendous, I have post-traumatic stress about it, they were like, 
they go, hey, we're going to play some like music. And like, why don't you do a dance for us? And I was like, w what? <laughs> but as is my trademark, I, when I'm in, I am all in. And that was probably the problem. Because I was like, woo! I was like getting it and like trying to be funky. It was so bad. Is it safe to assume you did not get this job? I did not get okay. the Dr. Pepper job. No. <laughs> How about you, Fred? Like after you had done, I think the first thing I saw you in was The Boy Who Could Fly, which is an amazing performance. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, but did you, you know, have success sort of? I also out? auditioned with a mask on my face. <laughs> now it's all coming back to me now. And with, with the dance audition was a mask, or there's another bad. This audition? This is much later. Um, it was for Peter Bogdanovich uh, for a movie you called. You have more mask. bad audition stories than big <laughs> yeah, break we can, stories. Listen, by we're the actors. Way. Come on. I'm sure we all do. All day. This is where we're among friends here. <laughs> we talk all day about bad terrible audition auditions. Stories? How long do you have? Um, but I think 35 minutes. So make it. It fast. was. Yeah. I, here's one thing I learned: when they ask me to put a mask on, that's not a good sign. <laughs> I'm probably not getting it. That's what I've learned. Fred, as we were saying. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, there's so many. But early on, I learned a valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, I was younger. My mom was, it was a real pain to drive downtown, you know, in traffic, you know, and after school and then come back. And it was really hard. But we did it because I enjoyed it. And my mom supported that. And so... We drove down for an audition, and I don't know if it was for, you know, Alpo or yeah, Cal Can. I don't know. It was for it was for some for a dog, you know, for animals, you know, and uh, and um, they. Uh, I went in and out like in two seconds. And my mom was like, "How'd that go? What happened?" I said, "I, I didn't even get to do the say my line, you know." I said, "What happened?" They said, "Well, I went in. And they said, do you like dogs?'" And I said, "No." And they said, "Okay, thank you very much." <laughs> What are you talking about? You said no. What did it say? They're not going to give you a dog. Say yes. <laughs> Who cares? We came all the way down here. Uh, what do you say? Yes. Whatever they ask you, say yes. <laughs> and so, I mean, we've all learned that at one time or another. You know, can you speak Russian? Uh huh. Da. Da. <laughs> you know, right, the Strovia. Can you ride a horse? Absolutely. Like, can you fence with one hand tied behind my back? Like, I mean, I learned that, uh, and it was an important lesson. We've all learned it at one point or another. And, uh, and um, yeah, so, uh, so I love dogs. <laughs> In case you guys are wondering. Oh, my. Okay. Um, <laughs> when I think of the two of you, which I do often, um, I think about two people who survived the 80s but also two people who have become masters at reinvention. Fred, a very busy director before The Grinder. Rob, I think, I think the first time I thought you were funny was Wayne's World. That was sort of like a change. But you, you sort of parlayed, suddenly were like, Rob Lowe's funny. Like, when, when did this happen? And then, no, but it was, you know, we didn't know. So thank Lorne Michaels and everyone who made that movie. But then Parks were like, whoa, he's like really funny. He's on a comedy. And... And the two of you have been able to continue to work, which is always a marvel for, for any actor, but do different things, and now you've come together. And it's sort of like you kind of circumvented, I think, a lot of uh, you know, trappings. And I'm wondering, what's your secret? I mean, well, I'm, I, I feel more than anything, I'm just blessed and, and, and lucky, and, and a lot of it's work, um, too. Uh, that I, I get to do both, that I get to do drama and I get to do comedy, because there are plenty of amazing actors who you think of only in terms of one or the other. So it was always my, my goal to try to be able to do both, but as, as you guys know, you can only do what you're offered. And, and I do think that, that Wayne's World and, and, um, and, 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 and hosting Saturday Night Live was the, was the, way, mm -hmm. uh, the way in. Um, and you know, you just you just keep your head down, and you 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 try to. It sounds so horribly actory and cliche, but you you focus on the work. You try to do the best work you're offered, and um, and and then get out of the results because you can't control those, right? So, um, but I've also been been really fortunate to be with such great collaborators always, mm -hmm. um, whether it's Lauren and Mike and and Dana or Farley and Spade or Amy Poehler and, and Aziz and Zari and Pratt and, and, every, and Rashida and everybody on Parks or, or, or on our show um, with Jake and Kasdan and with Fred and 
um, Andrew and, and, and Jared and everybody. They, they, it's, all, it's like the A-team. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's like murderer's row. So that, that's, <laughs> that's always helpful. And Fred, you became a director and then became a very busy director. What sort of prompted you to get back into series television? Because being a director is a great gig. You have more privacy. Yeah. You aren't being sort of recognized as much as you make. Yeah, but there's work. no free clothes. There's no free there's clothes. There's no, yeah, come on. There's no free clothes. <laughs> That's very true. The tables at restaurants get Not worse so and good. worse. They get worse and worse, <laughs> yeah. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> But you, but I, I, I noticed when you, I think I visited the sunny set, it was maybe like seven years ago when you were first kind of getting busy. Yeah. And I was like, good for, I was so proud of you that you were not only not in rehab, but you were thriving. Right, right. <laughs> and seemingly so normal and like married yeah. with children. And, and it was heartening to see someone escape the child actor sort of, you know, trap and also move on and do something great. So I'm wondering what, what prompted you to sort of get back into acting? Um, you know, I, I, it was not part of the plan. I mean, none <laughs> of this is any, ever part of the plan. Um, I, re, I always wanted to be directing, and it was, uh, what I, you know, ever since I was a kid on the Wonder Years, I was always look at the cameras and take them apart and <laughs> wonder how they worked. And I'm something. sure they love that. They hated it. The they, hated it. <laughs> they hated it. Um, uh, but, um, it, so I was very happy doing that, and I, I really enjoyed it, and, and um, it was very satisfying. But then this opportunity came along, and I mean, what prompted me literally was like, <laughs> I didn't want to have it be uncomfortable when I dropped my kids off at school. Was really <laughs> the whole genesis of it. That's where he was discovered for this. Yeah, it's it's, it's the new Schwab's drugstore. Is is the drop off at drop school? Drop off line at my kid's school. Yeah, uh, because the, Nick Stoller, who's one of the executive producers on the on the on the pilot, and a hysterical, uh, terrific director and, and comedy writer, did Neighbors and Get Under the Greek and Sarah Marshall. He was on. He was executive producer uh, of the show and developed the show with Andy and Jared, our, the creators, and. Um, he you know, said, oh, hey, you know, read the script. You're free to be. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I, thank you, though. I'm, I'm good. And my mom was like, we're going to be in school with them. My, or my wife. My wife. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> they both sound the same. My imitation of them is identical. Identical. We're all there with you, brother. Yeah, yeah. We're all there with. No need to My wife it. was like, we're going we're gonna to be in school with them for like 10 years. Our daughter's in the same class. Like, did he, did he want you to go to a meeting? I'm like, yeah, but I don't, you know, at least go to the meeting. Like, don't be a jerk about it, just go. I was like, all right. Uh, and and I, I went, and I really liked everybody. You know, like, like, like uh, 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 Rob said, you know, Andy and Jared and Jake and Nick and all the, the creative team behind the show were just, we had very similar comedic sensibilities. And I really liked the script, and I knew Rob was a part of it, so I, I knew it was going to be good. You know, whether, whether or not, you, you know, you never know if it's, people are going to watch it or if it's going to succeed or if it's going to be on the fall schedule. But I knew that at the very least it would be a fun week, you know, on set <laughs> making the pilot. That was in March. So now we've been here together since then. And I've been, I couldn't be more thrilled because I got in it with the purest of intentions, which was I love the material. I like the people behind it. Let's go. And the fact that it's worked out and we're doing it, I couldn't be more thrilled because it really started – uh, with just a, an enthusiasm for the for the for the part and the script and the people involved with it, and wanting to avoid an awkwardness at school. Yeah, and now it's so comfortable. <laughs> it's, now it's like, oh, hey Nick, oh hey Fred, <laughs> and that's why I'm here. <laughs> the, the simplicity of that the, that interaction, it's great. And how would you say that the business has most changed since you first started? Whether it's the way you get jobs, the way things function, I mean, aside from there being now like 600 TV shows as opposed to 23 when you started, is there a sort of an inherent sort of mechanical difference in the way the business works? Well, I can only imagine what's different about like people who are, who are at the, the part in their careers that I was, mm -hmm. you know, in, in that era. I mean, I, I can't even imagine what, what that must be, must, must be like. Um, and... I mean, look, the, the, t the tough part of it is I think it's easier to get famous today. Um, I mean, that's, I, I guess that can be good and bad. But in the, in, when I started, if, you had to have at least some sort of game to get famous. I mean, you, just, you couldn't just be on a reality show or, or, or even just be good looking. You really, really it wasn't, that wasn't even enough. It was like, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, but, you know... Um, I mean, Thank I, God I got in, because. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> um, so, so there's that. Like, I do think there was a vetting process, 
that there isn't today. Um, I mean, I just know, because I, I went to um, Santa Monica High School, right? And, and I'd come from Ohio. I wanted to be an actor when I lived in Ohio. People beat me up all the time because they thought that that was not something a man should do, um, uh, if you're reading between the lines. And uh, so when I got out here, I thought, oh, this is California. It's show business. And, and people in Santa Monica felt the same way. Nobody would, like, and today, like, every kid has, like, wants a SAG card or has a SAG card. Because when I started, if you were a child actor, you were playing the, the child of the star, right? There were one-offs, certainly. But for the most part, every part, every television show, every movie was about adults for adults. And, and now it's the exact inverse. Every movie, every television show is for kids, i.e. young people, with young people, and, and it's, it's so the whole business flopped on its head. So, um, I mean, that's the, the single biggest thing I've seen is, is and even the movies that, that sort of made me, about last night, seen Almost Fire, um, all of those movies today. Those movies don't exist today. They don't exist. No, they, they, well, a studio would not make them. I mean, if you did it today, it's Schedule F, and no distributor, and maybe it gets to Sundance if you're lucky, and then it sits on the shelf for a year, and then they butcher the release, and then no one sees, that, that's, that's what those movies are today. Or they're just remakes of what we saw in the 80s. And yeah, well, they remade about last night. They literally just remade it. So, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> they, they, it was the best, the best it. was like from afar, monitoring them trying to find the new me. That was awesome. <laughs> Well, it was a black cast, like, too, like, oh, by the way. I was like, I haven't read it. I'm not aware of it. I'm like, who are they talking to? Um, <laughs> but it was so a black they, cast. So they, it was completely when they, different. Eventually, yeah. when, when pressed into trying to find the, room, the new me, they went to exactly who you would think of, Kevin Hart. Right. <laughs> you guys are very similar in so many ways. And obviously, Fred, you, you know, the Wonder Years ended, and you had seemed like you had some breathing room to be a normal kid and go to school and... Then what? Stanford, fancy, he's smart. very fancy, very smart. Fancy, smart man. But what? What? I guess prompted you to sort of get back into showbiz? When did you know that you wanted to? Yeah, I, I, I always wanted to get back. Can into I just it. point out the way Fred's holding the mic, like Mick Jagger, right now? Look at this. <laughs> I'm ready to go. This. Look at I'm, this. 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 If you need me to move, I got. The, <laughs> I got the cord. I can go there. I can go over here. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. go there. I'll learn something new every day from him. No, I mean, I, I really do. I don't know what's gonna happen, or, or you know I like when. It. You got your Freddie Mercury. Oh, but if it <laughs> like move, oh, if, if this thing starts to open up, really I can good. go. I can go. I can come down here. I can come sit with you guys. I can come out here. I got this move right here. I like it. So, I like it. You no, know, I'm I, just. I'm old school. I'm holding it like I'm fucking Walter Cronkite. <laughs> I need to like get it together. I got, I got, uh, you got to have some cord. You got to be ready. You got to be ready for the moment. Ready for anything. <laughs> we know. We got it. What was your question? <laughs> You've taken us very off task. Sorry. Sorry. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. So post-college, wanting to get back in the business. I, well, I always wanted to stay in show business. And I think, and maybe, you know, naively so, but it's like I was working as a kid. And I was like, this is what I, I always want to be doing. Uh, but one way or, or another, you know, in, in, in some in some way, and you know, people would say to me when I was going to college, "Oh, you're so, you know, you're, you know, you're such an idiot. You're crazy. You know, you're working now, and now you're going to take this leave of absence, and what, there's going to be nothing when you come back." But I always took this very kind of, I, I just a long, long-term view of my career. You know, like I wasn't um, like an ingenue. I wasn't like this hot. Thing you know, so it wasn't like if I lose it now, like it'll never, I'll never get it again. <laughs> um, uh, right, but by the way, to Rob's credit, that to maintain that to be the hottest thing for 40 years, that's not a career plan. That doesn't just happen. That this is like something out of another planet. Like you don't say, "Oh, I'm gonna be Rob Lowe and look perfect," you know. <laughs> Forever. Um, so that plan wasn't on the table for me, you know? And I was like, well, you know, in, in, for I thought, like, you know, what would be, I was hoping, you know, I started when I was six years old. So I don't know, a 60 year career, what's four years of, you know, leaving for, for college? And so I kind of always saw it as this part of a, a bigger plan. And 
I felt like going away to school would only help me be better in, in what I wanted to do. And, and it has. It really, it really has, that, that time away. Um, not just what I learned, but what I learned about myself. And it was, it was just a really important time for me. And so, um, so it wasn't a difficult thing for me at all to, to leave. And then coming back, I just, you know, I just scrapped. I did everything I could to try and get a job behind a camera. You know, I, I literally... Like one of my first jobs, I, I saw I was watching a TV show and it was before TiVo, so I couldn't stop it. So I had to like, you know, like wait for it to come on again. I wrote down the name of the production company. It was called Brookwell McNamara after the show, and I just called them and said it was a show called Even Stevens that Shia LaBeouf started on. I loved that show. I thought it was so <laughs> funny, and I loved the sensibility. And I just like called them and said like, Hey, can I come watch? You say you this guys? is Fred Savage. I want to work for you. Yeah, I said I want to come watch your show, and I would just I would call anybody I would call anyone I knew I would. Some people, a lot of people would say, oh, come hang out on our set and come observe, and that sometimes led to a chance. Most times people wouldn't call me back or would say, like, yeah, no. <laughs> um, and so, it's, but it's like anything. But I did feel, the thing I liked about directing that I felt, I was never comfortable, and still am not as an actor, like, selling, like, me being the product, you know? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm so great, or hire me, or I'll be so good, or aren't I funny? I, I was so uncomfortable, I'm still not comfortable with that. And I feel like, you know, to, to really excel, you have to in some way be a great self-promoter like that. And I found as a director, I could sell like a product. You know, I could be like, I, I shot this. Like, I think this is good or I think this is funny or I, 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 could, I shot this thing and I could shoot this for you and I could be good at it. And so that like distance for me was, I was much more comfortable doing that than say, you know, hire me, you know, because I'll be really great. Um, so yeah, I, I that just felt more comfortable for me. You know, I, I I'm still not very good at, you know, selling myself. That's why I, I feel like you know the the pickup line is great. You know, <laughs> at, at the kids' school because I don't know if I would be in this situation. I really wouldn't. I really would not have been comfortable enough to stick my head out like that. Well, thank you to Nick Stoller for that. Yeah, thank you, Nick Stoller. And what what would surprise everyone here to learn about working with? the other what is a funny or strange habit that each of you has that would shock or surprise us oh uh, well, we, fred is obsessed with <laughs> with with online auctions <laughs> it's right right am yeah. i not making it up no i like auctions so, i like auctions so, uh, any I, kind of auction the thrill it's so exciting <laughs> it's like anything which by the way i can't I, I could live a billion years and not be interested in that <laughs> I, 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 like i'd be like ah um so yeah, that that's what. So that's he calms himself between scenes by. I like off. watch auctions that I'm not even part of. I'll just watch them. <laughs> no, it's unbelievable. <laughs> he's got a live feed from like the Netherlands. <laughs> like a painting is going up. He's like, shh, I'm, I'm watching this. <laughs> <laughs> you should do really you ever, run lines. Do you ever buy anything? No, I could never. <laughs> I could never buy them. I could never buy it. But I, I, um, I don't know. I like why. <laughs> I do. It's very weird. No one said that out loud like that. It does not sound. It does sound good, does it? Does not sound good. Does not. Sound, I should probably call my wife during that time and uh, see how the kids are. And what? What about Rob? Does he? Does he have any proclivities we should know about? Um, you know, I, I mean, I'm trying to think of something funny to share with you guys. Nothing that tops that. No, no. But I, but I, I, I will say, and I was, I was saying this uh, yesterday to somebody. The, the biggest surprise about Rob is how hard he works. I, I really, I, I feel like he is definitely someone who could be in the phone it in stage of his career. You know, <laughs> I mean, he's incredibly famous and incredibly successful and, and, and known as someone who's talented. Like, if Rob Lowe is doing something, it's going to be good, you know? And, uh, and, I, and, and I think that he's, he just, but so he, he very easily could not work as hard as he does. And I was so shocked the first day we were on the, on the, on the pilot, uh, or so impressed, and, and every day it doesn't let up. He's just relentless <laughs> at making it, trying to make it good, trying to make it better. How can we make this scene a little funnier? What if we stood over here? What if we stood over there? Like, his, his level of preparation and thought um, and desire to make it good, as good as it can be, has not abated one iota since the day we started. And I have to imagine, you know, you talk about why do you stay or the longevity or things like that. Um, I mean, you know, he just works harder than anyone I've worked with before and, and doesn't really have to. And I, I'm incredibly impressed by that. And, and it makes us all be like, well, shit, I mean, I, mean, I wish he'd relax a little bit because, like, <laughs> you know, like I'm at home learning my lines. And Jenny's like, why don't you just learn them, like, you know, at work? I'm like, because Rob's learning them right now. He showed them on set. <laughs> 
<laughs> like four, four speeches, he knows it down cold. I said, I, so he just sets the bar so high for all of us and, and, um, and also, challenges us all. He also worked with Sorkin for many years. That's, That's true. Yeah, was like, he has. Well, he taught me yeah. uh, a, a line learning technique. Got to, listen, got, are you ready? Ready for this? This, this is it. This may take a minute, but trust me, it's worth it. It works. Okay, okay so, so here's the deal. So you have a speech, right? So in, what you need to do is you take a piece of paper and then you write the speech down, but only the first letter of each word of the speech, okay? But, so, but, but with punctuation, so if there's a comma, you're writing the comma down. If, if something is capitalized, you're, you're, you're capitalizing it. If there are quotation marks, you're using that. But, but the word itself is only the first letter. And it'll look like some kind of like code. But what it does is, it, just by writing it down, it, it programs it into your brain, and then that is your prompt, so you don't look at the script anymore. So. You, there, it's already partially prompted to you because you have part of the word. And I'm, I'm t I asked, Fred, Fred was like, what? And, and what what's <laughs> it? It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. And it works so well. And yeah, people come to set or prop people thought we were insane, like just writing these like <laughs> reams of like these incoherent scribblings. But it's incredible. And when we do go up on a line, you know, uh, it, you know, uh, we'll be. Oh, it's a V word though. It's, it's a V word. It's, it's a V. I know. I know it's, wait, it's V W X. Uh, no, it's definitely V W X. Yeah. What is, what is, yeah. is it care careful? Uh, uh, no, it's cautious. It's cautious, right? It's cautious. <laughs> so we know we know the letter, and so whenever we, whenever like someone yells, like you know, our script supervisor yells, yells the cue off camera, like, oh right, yeah, P. No, but P it's. It, I'm P telling you, it, it'll P cut P thirty percent minimum off of your time, if not more. Absolutely, and that was from that was from was a, Sorkin. That was, was Allison Janney and I. Uh, I got that from AJ. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where she got it, but I'm 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 claiming it as mine. Yeah. Road tested, guys. I used it like day one. I used it day Multiple one. Multiple Emmys behind that baby. Yeah, it's it's it works. It works. And would you say that you have a favorite scene or a favorite day of shooting thus far on the show that that sticks out? Oh my God, this. Okay, look, I've done a lot you of You guys stuff. are kind of overselling the show a little bit. Well, no, that's yeah. a, you haven't talked about the show yet, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> and on just after you let out here, so plenty of time to get home, you get comfortable. No, I, I, on the show tonight, I rip off a Mission Impossible mask in an English courtroom. So I ask you, where else am I going to get to do that, okay? <laughs> I, I, I mean, the show within a show on The Grinder, when I'm playing The Grinder. Is is maybe it's my great. favorite thing I've I've ever done. <laughs> um, do you guys shoot those in the same? Do you just shoot everything there? All a the lot of it's in Fox. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have we have that that set. And I like built. how the creators are also in in those flashback episodes too. We get to see. Yeah, uh, Jared Paul plays Pincus, who's mm -hmm. the character that tells the grinder, "You can't do it. The firm will go down the tubes." Like that's his job. <laughs> it's impossible. Um, but what's fun about it for me is it's ruined watching Scandal or. <laughs> I watched Mission Impossible, which is great, but Tom Cruise has seven grinder scenes in it. <laughs> he has seven grinder scenes. He didn't even know he had grinder scenes. Oh, no, no, no. But, he, but yeah. he has scenes where the pinkest character goes, You can't do it. You'll never live through it. You're going to run out of air. And he walks right up and. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's the fucking grinder. It's unbelievable. It, so that's, our, our goal is to destroy any enjoyment that you have for watching, like, really, like, like over-the-top dramas. <laughs> Which is most of them, by the yes. way. Yeah. How about you, Fred? Do you have a favorite um, moment? I, you know, I, I, uh, I really like, uh, you know, we get to do some really kind of insane things, and the tone of the show is, is just walks a real tight line between being totally bizarre but also very grounded. And um, I like, uh, I really like uh, the scenes, the, the Dean Stewart scenes, you know. Uh, maybe, you know, once every other episode or so, we'll have these check-ins, you know, where that balance of absurdity versus reality really plays out. And it's a great kind of, um, like, just moment to check yourself tonally, to make sure you're not going too far with an episode. Or, or it always kind of pulls you back a little bit. And I, I like that because... At the end of the day, the show is funny and it's irreverent and it's self-referential and it's, it's, it's really hysterical. But in, for me, the thing I love is that the, at the end of the day, it's about two brothers. Mm -hmm. And I think that the thing I love that what the, the, the writers do with the show is that they'll take these insane ideas that are just these, you think these, these total flights of fancy that are these crazy things and somehow they show it through our relationship, our relationship with our dad, or somehow they'll say, this is this insane thing that's happening to this showbiz star, 
but it actually is something that we all can deal with and relate to and struggle with every day. And they can take the outlandish and make it very real. And, um, and the scenes, the two of us kind of checking in, uh, kind of kind of boils that all down to that have you, core thing about the show. Have you taken any real events from your own lives as public figures and woven them into the to the script? Oh, tons! The, you guys saw the pilot tonight, right? Mm -hmm. You shall. Um, the 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 beat with the, the selfie. We're gonna no, turn around. We'll, we be back. That's totally me. <laughs> that's a total ad lib. Yeah, that was improvised on the set. Yeah, you just did that on because set. Because I do it because people come up to me and they want to take a picture, and I'm like, the lighting is shitty. You don't want this shot. You want to, you want to, you want to look good. Come on, come on, seriously. Come on. Come on right. Right. So I even that. on a cell phone at like the Grove, Rob is gonna look great. <laughs> you know, it's I'm so doing it for annoying. Them. It's so annoying. It's for them. <laughs> it's for them. Look, everyone looks good. Everyone ends up looking great. Uh, that's right. It's good for everybody. You've Everyone come a long way good. since your Polaroid days <laughs> yeah, at the auditions. Real. That's right. Uh, we have um, a few questions to, from the audience to get through, so we'll yeah, get yeah. started. Uh, so Annette would like to know, for Where's Rob, Annette? Yeah, Annette, you got to show your hands. Show your head. Annette, Annette oh, Leisure. Right oh, here. She is. Hi, Hi. Annette. Hi. She would like to know, were there any times in your life you felt you were never going to book another job again? Oh, and then, all the, yeah. and then she also wants to say, P.S., you're a fine wine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um... Listen, it's whether you're uh, Henry Fonda, who, who I was lucky enough to, to, to have a conversation with um, about this very thing, Gregory Peck. I mean, I was lucky to come in up just in time to meet some of the, the giants, um, Cary Grant, um, and they all have the actor thing. And it doesn't matter, you know, you always feel like this is it. You, you always feel like I'm never going to work again. I mean, look, is it really I'm never going to work again? Yeah, sometimes it is. <laughs> um, um, but, but, but usually usually what it is is the like, which is even worse, is that sort of low-grade anxiety about like when, right? So it just unfortunately... It's part of the deal. It just is part of the deal, and we all, we all have it. And I know I felt, I think maybe, I think I got some comfort in, in, in hearing that from my heroes, where I was like, wait a minute, Henry Fonda? <laughs> like, like, apparently like on his deathbed, was like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna work again. They're like, no, <laughs> like, yeah, you're, 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 you're probably not gonna work again. Uh, for a different reason. Very useful. Um, <laughs> this is my favorite name of the day, Jewel Greenberg. Where is Jewel? There you are. Uh, she would like to know, um, to Fred, I actually like the second part of your question better than the first part. Instead of best advice, she wants to know what advice you've been given that you want to call BS on. Mm. I think that's way more productive, actually. Oh, totally. So much bad advice out there. Um, I'm getting yeah. a lot of it right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, like uh, anything we say. Um, <laughs> Uh, bad advice. Um, well, I mean, I touched on uh, don't go to college. You're being an idiot. That was terrible advice that I was fortunate enough to ignore. But then the other thing would be, um, oh, it's going to look totally different on screen. <laughs> that is bullshit. <laughs> if, 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 like, if it doesn't feel right, if the pants look stupid, if you don't look through the hat, if you're squinting, if the makeup's not right, whatever you're doing, the blocking's not right, if the scene doesn't feel right, if it's not playing funny, oh no, it's gonna be different when you see it. Yeah, it'll be worse. It's yeah. all yeah, different it's all right. It's way <laughs> worse. worse. It's definitely different. So I didn't I like guess, it on the set. I hate it when I yeah, see it. I guess that's not advice. It's just, mm -hmm. that's like the biggest lie that I'm told, and I get told all the time, even now. I'm like, I don't know, but oh no, it's gonna look great on camera. I'm like, that's it won't because we're not gonna find out, you know, because this isn't happening. So, so I think, I think what it comes down to is, like, you're right, you're right. That's the biggest thing I realized is like, we're all creative, emotional, sensitive, intuitive, intuitive people, and you're right. So um, trust that. Trust that. That's you know, excellent advice. In, 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 in the casting process, because now I'm, on, I'm more on the other side of it than in, than in the, the, the previous side, and inevitably it's the actors who 
have a really healthy case of the fuckets <laughs> that are the ones that make a mark and work. And there's Annette, not- I'm sorry for the language. <laughs> All right. Sorry. No, you need to hear this. Yeah, you gotta hear. You need to hear brother. the hard truth. Hey, though. little brother, this yeah. is the way it goes. Yeah. You, you walk in there, <laughs> you do your thing, man. Okay. Right. Oh, all right. <laughs> nice. Good. No, but it, but it's it it's true. People want different. They want a point of view, and I feel like so much workshoppy stuff. I mean, a lot of good can come of it. Is to like put you in a in in a sort of mindset to not have a case. Excuse me of the fuckets, and I I think that's critical. Very smart. And I just thought of one question I wanted to ask. What are you most critical of when you watch a performance of yours? What bugs you when you see yourself on I don't like when I hunch my shoulders. I do a lot of hunching. So I always, yeah, I do a lot of hunch. Like, oh, what do you mean? And I go up like that. So I'm always trying to like, un- I don't want to, I don't want to hunch my shoulders. But it kind of, it works for your character though. Yeah, He's but, but the hunch, you don't want the hunch to be a crutch, you know? You want to <laughs> you wanna act the hunch. The hunch should be subtext, you know? Okay. Should be an, uh, an implied hunch. Yes, yeah. indicate it in your okay. performance. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I, I always want to make, I, I just want to sound na- like n- just natural. I just want to mm-hmm. sound natural. I feel like there's so many times, and my wife is brutal, brutal, <laughs> brutal. I mean, she's been great for, to help me, but to help me, she's been just, I've been like, well, like what does she say? She'll be like, you sound like, you sound phony. She'll just be like, that's bullshit. <laughs> you sound like an idiot. You sound like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and she'll say it like when she'll see me on doing something. Um, uh, or like if I'm running lines with her or something, she's like, mm, no. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, that's not right. That sounds, I don't believe, I, like it just sounds, stu- it just sounds bad. And, and, and she's always right. So I'm always trying to just like not, not push, not push, not push. Smart. How about you, Rob? Uh, my, my thing is if I get tired, right, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, I notice that I begin to talk out of one corner of my mouth and I kind of look like Anthony Hopkins <laughs> in Legends of the Fall. <laughs> After he had the stroke at the end. Post stroke. Post, yeah, stroke. post, post yeah. with the, dr- the drool bucket sequences with the, the little writing he did. Um, and so if you, you'll see, now that I've called your attention to it, thanks so much, um, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll notice it. Um, and it, I don't know what it, I'm deaf in one ear, so, and, and it's the side that I can hear in, so maybe it has something to do with that. I don't know, but, but I, I'm like, oh, mm, 13 hour day, mm, there it is. <laughs> oh yeah. Back to back days. But as long as you look good, that's all that matters. Listen, that's all it's about. That's all that's matters. I think we all pretty much know that now. We know. That's why we're here tonight, Rob. Um, We have time for one question, and I'll pose it to the two of you. This is from Adriana. How do you feel that you've evolved as actors over the years, and which roles you think uh, took you to the next level? So which roles in your career were benchmarks? Hi. 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 Um... Oh boy, I, I, you know, again, so many of them. Um, uh, I, I think for me, it's it's um, the West Wing, um, because I learned. Thank you. I learned to trust the writing, and to leave my acting toolbox, you know, in my car every day. Hmm. Um, I mean, sometimes you need it, and when you need it is when the acting's when the, when the writing's bad or when the writing's not good, then you bring your toolbox out. How can I make it believable? How can I make it entertaining? How can I do all of these things? But at the, it's like, um, I know people get crazy about um, David Mamet's uh, school of, mm-hmm. uh, but, he's, but he's right. It's, he, his thing is, it's, and I, I urge you to go online and read David Mamet's letter to his writing staff of his terrible CBS procedural. <laughs> it is delicious. <laughs> and, and basically what it is, is like, it's not the actor's job to be compelling or entertaining. That's mm. your job. The mm. actor's job is to put what you write on screen in a believable way, period. Mm. And so what we end up doing often, because the writing is not good, is we have to carry it on our shoulders. So on, on West Wing, because Aaron's such a genius, I, I learned to trust that and really put that into my, my, D, my DNA. Um, so that, that's probably and Essentially, the, that's what the spoof grinder show is about, that very thing. That's an actor doing, <laughs> right. doing the stuff that, you know, left her own devices we can do to push, right. to make stuff dramatic. Mm-hmm. How about you, Fred? What, what moments or roles you, do you feel like put, propelled you to where you are? 
Well, I mean, you know, I, you know, obviously, I think. <laughs> see, there's a peril to this. This can get your way. <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> Up. It's very like Robert Plant, 1970. Robert Plant. Yeah. The Forum. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I mean, I, I think the Wonder Years was obviously a role. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but I mean, I mean, that was just a, a life-changing experience in every way. You know, I mean, it brought me to California. It changed my life, and you know, I feel like you know, even now, all these years later, I, I still feel like you know, every door that has opened for me. Um, even today, extends from that. I mean, that's kind of everything. Kind of came from that, um, and I and I think I just learned a lot about being an actor on that show, doing the, the good and the bad. You know, I mean, there were some not great performances by me on that show. I think history has been very kind <laughs> in, the, in its memory, but but I think that um, uh, you know you just get a lot of, you know, Rob and I talk about this, like, it's a, there was a lot of reps, you know, there was a lot of steps to the plate, you know, mm -hmm. and so in just the doing, I could try a lot of things, and I could succeed, and I could fail, and I could think about what I did differently, or how I could do it better, and then the other thing is just time has changed me as an actor, I mean, going from playing, you know, a junior high school kid there, and now I'm, you know, on the show, playing an attorney, and a husband, and a, and a father, which I've never played, I haven't played uh, a husband or a father before, <laughs> and and so life has just changed me. You know, I did so much work when I was younger and my adolescence and teenage years and early twenties. But um, you know, I um, life has just kind of made me a different actor, and I've really had to learn to um, accept the differences. And I think it's made me a better actor. I think I'm more confident. You know, because I have these experiences and. I have these things to draw on, and my wife can say to me, you know, um, just act like you're talking to me, like when you do a scene with your wife, just, you know, on the pilot, you know, she said, just, just talk to me, just act, you know, so I don't know if that reveals too much about our marriage, or I don't know, <laughs> but, 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 you know, I, I you know, I, I didn't have those, those um, relative experiences that I could use, you know, when I was, when I was younger, and now having all these real life experiences to, to pull from, it's made me a better actor, and I, uh, certainly a more confident one. Um, I don't know about better, but I definitely feel great about it. I don't know. If, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's any good, but I'm. I'm I love it. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we're so happy you were here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. <laughs>